So we're trying to create a rough outline of our floating island. Now when we create this rough shape, I'm going to try to count uh, off a positive number of points that I want to use. Um, why do I say a positive number of points? It's just so that I don't have to go back and add any extra vertices to my um, my shape and using the multi-cut tool to uh, correct triangle. So let's say I give myself uh, 20 points, all right, 20 vertices. I'm just going to create this shape in my on Maya. It's a really basic shape. All right, let me try to change it up a little bit. Maybe it looks something. Try not to get uh, too much symmetry going on. All right, so that's my shape. And I'm going to draw 20 points along here. And these 20 vertex points are going to help me to keep it you know, low poly. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten. Now I already have more vertices than I was wanting to, which is okay. I can always increase that vertex count. So two, four, six, eight, ten. All right, so this is 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and then 32. I'll add two more right here. All right. So this just serves as a rough shape of my island. And each one of these green lines are going to represent uh, what we call the edges that we're going to need to create to make this object a polygon. Or, well, a quad. All right. After we create this silhouette, this shape, we're going to have to go back and use this tool called the multi-cut tool. And what the multi-cut tool allows us to do is select two adjacent vertices and create quadrants. Now the reason why we're trying to create quadrants is because, um, well there's lots of reasons, but number one, it's good practice for modeling try to avoid triangles okay number two it deforms much easier and if we ever had to smooth this shape it's going to have a, a much nicer uh, geometry and edge flow all right so after we create those uh, that shape these blue lines with the multi-cut tool we're going to go back and use the insert edge loop tool to create uh, these horizontal lines. So the horizontal lines will give us, um, you know, these smaller squares. And these smaller squares are going to be ideal for us when we start to extrude the base of our shape just like an island floating island so I'm just going to press control Z to go back a few times so that all I have left on my screen is a red outline and those green dots that I'm using for a reference now you can use the same technique by using the grease pencil tool or you can use uh, the create polygon tool and kind of freestyle it. So first thing I'm going to do is go to mesh 
tools, create polygon tool. Now if I go clockwise you, and I press return, you're going to see that the normals are facing the wrong direction. So I'm going to go counterclockwise and that geometry is facing the right direction. So let's go ahead and start creating. So I'm going to each one of these little dots. It's almost like Christmas colors here. It's like green and red. I can't wait for Christmas to come. It's like it never comes fast enough. And then when it does come, like you wish it came back again. Um, I never really receive any presents anyways. It's just songs and singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman. And I love all those Christmas carols. Don't you guys? Don't you love singing Christmas carols? You like go to the neighbor that you really don't like and you just <laughs> you bring like a hot cup of coffee with marshmallows or well hot cho hot chocolate, right? Anyways, uh, enough of that rant. Um, so I'll go back to the grease pencil tool which is found underneath lighting and I'll click on this to get rid of what I just created. <coughs> And I'll click on the move tool. Now sometimes this grid is a little bit annoying. So I'm going to go to display and then turn the grid off. Grid off, perfect. And so now the next step is to create these, um, create quads. Now at the edge of my shape, I want to kind of expand that a little bit wider because I know that all of the edges are going to converge right there and the same thing on the other side I don't want it to get too narrow so I just want to make sure that when the edge loops come all the way across they don't converge to a tiny little point okay so I'll start from left to right and I'll go to mesh tools multi cut and then if I zoom in close, you can see that it's like a little knife, you know, multi-cut. And I want to hover over that first vertex point and then click on the adjacent point there. And now you can see that it has just formed a quadrant, right? So that's what my goal is to go from left to right and create quadrant. Right, so here, here, there's no time lapse so that's why I try to keep it at a short number of um, vertex points. Got a little carried away. Okay, so here and here. <clears throat> now there's a terminology that um, we use when we're modeling, it's called edge flow and some of the edges that I'm creating form like this um, pizza shape or they're not perfectly, um, or they're not evenly uh, set, what's the word? They're not evenly apart from each other. Um, some of them are a little bit wider and ideally it would be good to try to keep them relatively about the same width apart if you can. So I'm just going to go back in here to the vertex mode and move a few of these vertices. You know, try not to change my shape too much, but just enough so that I get nice, even distribution of vertices, of edges, I'm sorry. Okay, now the fun part, um, I'm going to use the insert edge loop tool to create edge loops that go all the way across. So I go to mesh tools, insert edge loop option box. And just a good way um, practice is to always reset the tool. All right. Now I'm going to use the multiple edge loops and change this value to maybe something like seven. And I'll click on a vertical edge and there we go. So now, that's what I have. All right? So I go into my perspective mode. And 
and I get this weird shape. All right. Now we're actually going to extrude this shape, but before I extrude it, I want to just change the shape of the vertices here. Let's move these out and kind of round off this edge. Like this. Like that. And do the same thing with this edge. I'll round it off a little bit. Kind of looks like an odd shaped bean. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking about beans because so I just got finished eating red beans. <laughs> All right, so that's the shape. Okay, and I'm going to press Control E. I'm going to move it up in the Y axis to give it a little bit of thickness. And now the fun part comes. Okay, I'm going to use this tool called Soft Selection, or you can simply just select a random number of faces by going to face mode and selecting faces but sometimes it becomes like really difficult to select faces you can highlight a group of faces but when you do that you actually have the faces selected at the top so you can simply press control hold control and deselect those faces at the top and select the ones at the bottom or you can use this tool called the paint selection tool. All right, so if I hold control, it's going to deselect faces. If I just click and drag, it will actually select faces. If I hold B and hold left mouse click, it will make that selection brush larger. Okay, so the goal for me um, right now is to select a few faces I wouldn't call that a few but select a couple of these faces and begin to extrude so I'm still in the paint selection tool so I'm going to press W which is a move tool and then press control E now a really important part is after you press control E to move it down okay like that so I'm going to move it down one level. I'm going to select a few faces here. I'm sorry, a few edges. Press W, move them out, move them down just to make the transition from the top of the surface to the bottom of the surface look a little bit smoother. And I guess you could call this like sculpting 01 because I am just using Maya's basic tools uh, to form a shape. Okay, so I'm just going around here to this edge, moving up and down. If I hold shift and double click on an edge, sometimes it will select that entire edge loop. Right, so I think that's cool. It's really important to get used to orbiting around. If I select the vertex here, I can press F, and now I'm much closer to my geometry. You can press four to go into wireframe mode. You know, these type of techniques. Okay, so. Just moving that out, getting the base structure to look nice. And then I'm going to extrude again. So I'll select less faces. So if I press control and hold it, left mouse click and drag, I'm going to actually deselect the faces that were uh, selected before. So, I think it's always important not only to go in your perspective view to look at it, but also to look at it from your your side view to make sure that the silhouette looks really good for you and whatever design is that you're going for. So I'll press Control E again. I'll move it down, and I'll just move it a little bit faster now. 
So I'll highlight that selection, press Control to deselect, Control E. You gotta do this. I'll scale it down a little more. Scale it that way. Maybe I'll take a few vertices. Maybe these guys here. Control to deselect, press W, and I'll just kind of move this section like that. I don't know. No really no rhyme or reason as to like what I'm doing. It's trying to create something that looks very blocky, something that looks very non-uniform. It is supposed to be a mountain and last time I checked mountains don't look perfect. So trying to avoid whatever I did on one side of the mountain to not do the same exact thing. So let's do that. I'll select a few more faces and maybe, just maybe, I'll extrude these six but you have to make sure that you don't select faces on the top and if you do press and hold control to deselect those faces. I'll press control E and let's drag that arrow off of the face. I don't know, I just call those things like crags, you know. So, so, moving vertices around. You can actually select an edge and model with an edge if you want to as well. You don't, you're not limited to just vertices. You could even select a face, you know, move a face down to form, you know, whatever shape that you're going for. All right, so. When you get finished creating this desired shape, um, you know, my, almost like a skateboard, something from the future, but there is, uh, again, a lot of other uh, parts of this geometry that you can use uh, to extrude, bring it down, and, and do whatever it is that you want to do. I'll go ahead and open up a, a scene I was working on before. So I'll just go to open scene. And animation one, floating island, scenes, and don't save. So this is uh, another version of it. It's still the same concept. And if I press 3, everything kind of like smooths out. But that's kind of the sh basic shape I'm going for. And in the next tutorial, we'll add mountains in the background by using the same tutorial, or uh, using the same method that we use to create the top part of this shape, which is the Create Polygon tool. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial.